Elementor has always been a leader in terms of user experience and ease of use, but no matter what we do, there will always be a learning curve to get past, the same as with every new software or hardware we use. Now, to help you get off to a rocking start, we've decided to list the most common mistakes people make in Elementor and the solutions to those mistakes. Now, if you find you've been making some of these mistakes, well, don't beat yourself up about it. Mastering any tool or task means that there's always a little more to learn. And the idea is to keep an open mind if you intend on honing your skills. I, for example, uh, recently learned that Command Shift T opens the last window I closed on Chrome. And just think of all those tabs and interesting articles that I've lost over the years. Anyway, before I make a mistake and forget the point of this masterclass, let's go over the common mistakes and their solutions so that we can elevate our elemental skills to the next level. Let's start with the first common mistake in Elementor using an incompatible theme. Every once in a while, we'll hear from a user who can't understand why they can't edit everything on the page, or they're having problems with a title or a header, not being able to adjust the space above or beneath them. There are several solutions to this recurring problem. The simplest is to change our theme to something similar that is compatible. The best place to find WordPress-compliant themes is on their repository. We can also shortcut this process even further by checking out the lists of themes that work best with Elementor, where we'll find links to themes like Astra and OceanWP. Of course, we'll be including a link to these lists in the show's description below. But perhaps the best solution is to use the Hello theme and the Theme Builder, the same way that we did in a previous masterclass, and by doing this we customize everything to work and appear exactly as we need it to. We'll be posting a link to that episode in the show notes too, but if you don't want to miss out on another masterclass, you should definitely click the subscribe button and tap that bell for more insight and inspiration on WordPress design and marketing. The next common mistake we've come across, common mistake number two, is using columns and spacer widgets to position elements. Now we've come across many users that have been positioning and aligning their elements using extra columns and the spacer widget from day one. Not only is this unnecessary, but it's also detrimental to your page because using empty content elements to arrange your layout gives search engines the wrong impression, resulting in a lower ranking for your site. The solution is simple. Every single element and widget in Elementor has margin, padding, and z-index parameters in the advanced tabs. Many even have additional alignment and positioning options in the widget content and style tabs. Doing this also allows you to copy-paste the spacing when using the paste style option. Brilliant, I hear you say. Wonderful. But how come you have a spacer widget? The space widget in Elementor is a leftover or relic from the very first versions of Elementor, back when both we and our users felt that it would be helpful. As the software evolved, we realized that expanding the possibilities of the widgets themselves was a far better way to go. We may remove it in future versions of Elementor, and we may not. If you use the space widget often and find it useful, please let us know in the comments below. And don't forget to include examples. And just a quick reminder, the margin value defines the space outside the widget frame, and the padding value defines the space inside the frame between the frame and the element. Get used to using padding and margins. After all, that's what they were designed for. And remember, habits are meant to be broken, even the good ones. Hobbits, on the other hand, are not meant to be broken, especially not the good ones. But that's neither here nor there. While we're on the subject of columns, it's time to mention another common column mistake. At number three, we have incorrect use of the inner section widget, or what some users call the column widget. As you know, the best way to add a fresh new section is to click on the Add New Section button. Unfortunately, some people have gotten into a habit of missing the option of assigning a number of columns for that section in favor of dragging in an inner section widget. When setting up a fresh section, the best practice is indeed through using the Add Section button, then selecting the number of columns we want. 
This not only keeps everything nice and uniform throughout our section, but it allows us to have things independent, like animated backgrounds or foregrounds, while keeping the markup light. The inner section widget was designed to allow users to create a distinction within a somewhat uniform section. Moving on to common mistake number four. Editing your website without disabling or clearing your cache first. Websites are constantly undergoing alterations and updates. It's something that we take as a given. And we found that far too often users will spend hours making changes to their site at the back end only to find that this has made absolutely no difference to the site at the front end where it is live. The caching for our sites is designed to reside at the front end and reciprocate the requests for content that come from the people visiting our website. A cache holds content data with a popular demand at the ready and this helps cut down the download time. Most commonly, we have the browser cache, but we also have a cache plugin and a website cache on the host server. Unless we let the system know that we are making changes, these caches will continue to send out the content we defined in the first place. Refreshing the page in the browser will clear the browser cache, and you can do this by pressing Command R on the Mac or Control F5 on a PC. You can also go into the browser's settings and find the Delete Cache option. Another way of doing this is to add a question mark after the URL in the address line followed by some gibberish. And this forces the browser to search for this information and in doing so reloads a fresh version of the page. Now some users use cache plugins like WP Rocket or WP Fastest Cache that perform the data caching outside the browser to help load the page faster. Here we suggest that you disable the cache plugin on the WordPress dashboard before starting to edit or make changes to your site. If you've forgotten to do this, just use the options in the plugin settings to clear the cache. Occasionally, the caching on the hosting server needs refreshing too. We can verify that this is causing the problems if the page fails to reload after clicking the Update button in the Elementor editor. If so, on the WordPress dashboard, we'll go to Elementor, Tools, and in the General tab, click on the Regenerate CSS button and then Save. The next common mistake, number five, is using the wrong sized images. We found that there is no shortage of users who upload images that are far too small or too big for the place they've allocated on the page and then fumble with the image widget settings to force the image to fit. This is also true of users who upload images of varying sizes to things like image galleries or carousels and find that they have the same difficulty. Regular Masterclass viewers will know and no doubt agree that planning is the key to working correctly and saving time in the process. Planning the sizes and dimensions of each photo and preparing our images in advance using design tools such as Sketch or Photoshop or even online sites like Pixelart or TinyPNG will save you a great deal of time and hassle. While you're working out the image dimensions, we should also work on the file size. High resolution images that slow down our page load time will result in large numbers of visitors bouncing off of your site. This is something we've also mentioned in our recent masterclass on translating our designs to WordPress using Elementor. And another thing we coincidentally mentioned in that same masterclass made it to this week's list. And that mistake, number six, is not setting default colors. There are many options in Elementor that are designed precisely to make our lives far easier. And setting your default colors, the primary colors of your design, will again save you a great deal of time as well as ensure that your color scheme will remain consistent across your whole website. The best practice would be to do this at the beginning of our page build, once we've got our first blank page opened in Elementor. We'll click on the menu or hamburger icon and select the default colors option. We'll click on one of the colors and select our new color from our palette. We can also dial in or paste the hex color code and then click apply. And we can also do the same with the default colors in the color picker. 
While some of these mistakes might seem insignificant, you'd be amazed how proper use of Elementor immediately shows tremendous improvement in the websites that you produce. Now, if you feel that we've missed any common mistakes that should be mentioned, or if you've come across common errors that you or your clients have made using Elementor, please share them with us in the comments below. We hope that you have found this inspiring, interesting, and helpful. And if it has, you definitely want to click the subscribe button and tap that bell to be sure that you don't miss out on a masterclass like this one. As always, we appreciate any comments and criticism you may have and any advice you could suggest for other users. After all, our goal is to be the best at helping others excel at their craft. Thanks for watching. Cheers.